The Marchantiophyta listen, are a division of non-vascular land plants commonly referred to as hepatics or liverworts. Like mosses and hornworts, they have a gametophyte-dominant life cycle, in which cells of the plant carry only a single set of genetic information. It is estimated that there are about 9,000 species of liverworts. Some of the more familiar species grow as a flattened leafless thallus, but most species are leafy with a form very much like a flattened moss. Leafy species can be distinguished from the apparently similar mosses on the basis of a number of features, including their single-celled rhizoids. Leafy liverworts also differ from most, but not all, mosses in that their leaves never have a costa present in many mosses and may bear marginal cilia, very rare in mosses. Other differences are not universal for all mosses and liverworts, but the occurrence of leaves arranged in three ranks, the presence of deep lobes or segmented leaves, or a lack of clearly differentiated stem and leaves all point to the plant being a liverwort. Liverworts are typically small, usually from 2 to 20 mm wide with individual plants less than 10 cm long, and are therefore often overlooked. However, certain species may cover large patches of ground, rocks, trees or any other reasonably firm substrate on which they occur. They are distributed globally in almost every available habitat, most often in humid locations although there are desert and arctic species as well. Some species can be a nuisance in shady greenhouses or a weed in gardens. Physical characteristics Description most liverworts are small, measuring from 2 to 20 mm .08 to .8 in, wide with individual plants less than 10 cm long, so they are often overlooked. The most familiar liverworts consist of a prostrate, flattened, ribbon-like or branching structure called a thallus plant body. These liverworts are termed thallus liverworts. However, most liverworts produce flattened stems with overlapping scales or leaves in two or more ranks. The middle rank is often conspicuously different from the outer ranks. These are called leafy liverworts or scale liverworts. See the gallery below for examples. Liverworts can most reliably be distinguished from the apparently similar mosses by their single-celled rhizoids. Other differences are not universal for all mosses and all liverworts, but the lack of clearly differentiated stem and leaves in thallus species, or in leafy species the presence of deeply lobed or segmented leaves and the presence of leaves arranged in three ranks, all point to the plant being a liverwort. Unlike any other embryophytes, most liverworts contain unique membrane-bound oil bodies containing isoprenoids in at least some of their cells, lipid droplets in the cytoplasm of all other plants being unenclosed. The overall physical similarity of some mosses and leafy liverworts means that confirmation of the identification of some groups can be performed with certainty only with the aid of microscopy or an experienced bryologist. Liverworts have a gametophyte-dominant life cycle, with the sporophyte dependent on the gametophyte. Cells in a typical liverwort plant each contain only a single set of genetic information, so the plant's cells are haploid for the majority of its life cycle. This contrasts sharply with the pattern exhibited by nearly all animals and by most other plants. In the more familiar seed plants, the haploid generation is represented only by the tiny pollen and the ovule, while the diploid generation is the familiar tree or other plant. Another unusual feature of the liverwort life cycle is that sporophytes, i.e. the diploid body, are very short-lived, withering away not long after releasing spores. Even in other bryophytes, the sporophyte is persistent and disperses spores over an extended period. Life cycle The life of a liverwort starts from the germination of a haploid spore to produce a protonema, which is either a mass of thread-like filaments or else a flattened thallus. The protonema is a transitory stage in the life of a liverwort, from which will grow the mature gametophore, gamete bearer, plant that produces the sex organs. The male organs are known as antheridia singular, antheridium, and produce the sperm cells. Clusters of antheridia are enclosed by a protective layer of cells called the perigonium, plural, perigonia. As in other land plants, the female organs are known as archegonia, singular, archegonium, and are protected by the thin surrounding parachetum, plural, parachata. Each archegonium has a slender hollow tube, the neck, down which the sperm swim to reach the egg cell. Liverwort species may be either dioicus or monoicus. 
In Dioicus liverworts, female and male sex organs are born on different and separate gametophyte plants. In Monoicus liverworts, the two kinds of reproductive structures are born on different branches of the same plant. In either case, the sperm must move from the antheridia where they are produced to the archegonium where the eggs are held. The sperm of liverworts is biflagellate, i.e. they have two tail-like flagellae that enable them to swim short distances, provided that at least a thin film of water is present. Their journey may be assisted by the splashing of raindrops. In 2008, Japanese researchers discovered that some liverworts are able to fire sperm containing water up to 15 centimeters in the air, enabling them to fertilize female plants growing more than a meter from the nearest male. When sperm reach the archegonia, fertilization occurs, leading to the production of a diploid sporophyte. After fertilization, the immature sporophyte within the archegonium develops three distinct regions, one, a foot, which both anchors the sporophyte in place and receives nutrients from its mother. Plant, two, a spherical or ellipsoidal capsule, inside which the spores will be produced for dispersing to new locations, and three, a seta, stalk, which lies between the other two regions and connects them. When the sporophyte has developed all three regions, the seta elongates, pushing its way out of the archegonium and rupturing it. While the foot remains anchored within the parent plant, the capsule is forced out by the seta and is extended away from the plant and into the air. Within the capsule, cells divide to produce both elater cells and spore-producing cells. The elators are spring-like, and will push open the wall of the capsule to scatter themselves when the capsule bursts. The spore-producing cells will undergo meiosis to form haploid spores to disperse, upon which point the life cycle can start again. Asexual reproduction Some liverworts are capable of asexual reproduction, in bryophytes in general. It would almost be true to say that vegetative reproduction is the rule and not the exception. For example, in Rickia, when the older parts of the forked thalli die, the younger tips become separate individuals. Some thallos liverworts, such as Marchantia polymorpha and Lunularia cruciata, produce small disc shaped gemmae in shallow cups. Marchantia gemmae can be dispersed up to 120 cm by rain splashing into the cups. In Metzgeria, gemmae grow at thallus margins. Marchantia polymorpha is a common weed in greenhouses, often covering the entire surface of containers. Gemma dispersal is the primary mechanism by which liverwort spreads throughout a nursery or greenhouse. Ecology Today, liverworts can be found in many ecosystems across the planet except the sea and excessively dry environments, or those exposed to high levels of direct solar radiation. As with most groups of living plants, they are most common, both in numbers and species, in moist tropical areas. Liverworts are more commonly found in moderate to deep shade, though desert species may tolerate direct sunlight and periods of total desiccation. Classification Relationship to other plants Traditionally, the liverworts were grouped together with other bryophytes mosses and hornworts in the division Bryophyta, within which the liverworts made up the class Hepatice, also called Marchantiopsida. However, since this grouping makes the Bryophyta paraphyletic, the liverworts are now usually given their own division. The use of the division name Bryophyta sensu lato is still found in the literature, but more frequently the Bryophyta now is used in a restricted sense to include only the mosses. Another reason that liverworts are now classified separately is that they appear to have diverged from all other embryophyte plants near the beginning of their evolution. The strongest line of supporting evidence is that liverworts are the only living group of land plants that do not have stomata on the sporophyte generation. Among the earliest fossils believed to be liverworts are compression fossils of Palavicineites from the Upper Devonian of New York. These fossils resemble modern species in the Metzgerialis. Another Devonian fossil called Protosalvinia also looks like a liverwort, but its relationship to other plants is still uncertain, so it may not belong to the Marchantiophyta. In 2007, the oldest fossils assignable at that time to the liverworts were announced, Metzgeriathalus sharonii from the Gavetian, Middle Devonian, of New York, United States. However, in 2010, five different types of fossilized liverwort spores were found in Argentina, dating to the much earlier Middle Ordovician, around 470 million years ago. Internal classification 
Bryologists classify liverworts in the division Marchantiophyta. This divisional name is based on the name of the most universally recognized liverwort, genus Marchantia. In addition to this taxon based name, the liverworts are often called Hepaticophyta. This name is derived from their common Latin name as Latin was the language in which botanists published their descriptions of species. This name has led to some confusion, partly because it appears to be a taxon-based name derived from the genus Hepatica which is actually a flowering plant of the buttercup family Ranunculaceae. In addition, the name Hepaticophyta is frequently misspelled in textbooks as Hepatophyta, which only adds to the confusion. Although there is no consensus among bryologists as to the classification of liverworts above family rank, the Marchantiophyta may be subdivided into three classes. The Jungamaniopsida includes the two orders Metzgeriales simple thalloids, and Jungamaniales leafy liverworts. The Marchantiopsida includes the three orders Marchantiales complex thallus liverworts, and Sphericarpales bottle hepatics, as well as the Blossiales previously placed among the Metzgeriales. It also includes the problematic genus Monoclea, which is sometimes placed in its own order Monocleales. A third class, the Haplometriopsida is newly recognized as a basal sister group to the other liverworts. It comprises the genera Haplometrium, Trubia, and Apotrubia. An updated classification by Soderstrom et al. 2016 Marchantiophyta Stotler and Crandall Stotler 2000 Haplometriopsida Stotler and Crandall Stotler 1977 Haplometrials Hamlin 1972 Trubialis Schlikov 1972 Marchantiopsida Cronquist, Taktahan and Zimmerman 1966 Blossiadae He Nigrin et al. 2006 Blossialis Stotler and Crandall Stotler 2000 Marchantiade Engler 1893 Sensu He Nigrin et al. 2006 Nia Hodgsignales Long 2006 Sphericarpalis Cavers 1910 Bottle Liverworts Lunulariales Long 2006 Marchantiales Limprick 1877 Complex Thalloids Jungamaniopsida Stotler and Crandall Stotler 1977 Pellidae He Nigrin et al. 2006 Pellaalis He Nigrin et al. 2006 Palavicinialis Frey and Steck 2005 Fossombroniales Shlikov 1972 Metzgeriade Bartholomew Began 1990 Plurozeals Shlikov 1972 Metzgerialis Shalad 1930 Jungamanaade Angler 1893 Leafy Liverworts Poriales Shlikov 1972 Talidiales Shlikov 1972 Jungamanales von Klingriff 1858 It is estimated that there are about 9,000 species of liverworts, at least 85% percent of which belong to the leafy group. Despite that fact, no liverwort genomes have been sequenced to date and only few genes identified and characterized. Economic importance in ancient times, it was believed that liverworts cured diseases of the liver, hence the name. In Old English, the word liverwort literally means liver plant. This probably stemmed from the superficial appearance of some thalloid liverworts, which resemble a liver in outline, and led to the common name of the group as hepatics, from the Latin word hepaticus for belonging to the liver. An unrelated flowering plant, hepatica, is sometimes also referred to as liverwort because it was once also used in treating diseases of the liver. This archaic relationship of plant form to function was based in the doctrine of signatures. Liverworts have little direct economic importance today. Their greatest impact is indirect, through the reduction of erosion along streambanks, their collection and retention of water in tropical forests, and the formation of soil crusts in deserts and polar regions. However, a few species are used by humans directly. A few species, such as Rickia fluitans, are aquatic thallus liverworts sold for use in aquariums. Their thin, slender branches float on the water's surface and provide habitat for both small invertebrates and the fish that feed on them. Gallery A Small collection of images showing liverwort structure and diversity. See also Bryophyte Embryophyte references external links Liverwort structure in pictures Latal, assembling the liverwort tree of life. Note, for 500,000 million years ago read, 480 million years ago. Interrelationships of mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. Additional information on liverworts. Liverworts.